Alright, so the first thing I want to do is build the basic model. So I'm in Blender, I tab into edit mode, and I'm going to pull this cube up to about here. And then I'm going to take these four corners, E to extrude, and S to scale down. I repeat for this side. I'm going to hit Shift A and add a cylinder. And I'm going to scale that down by hitting S. And then I'm going to hit S and lock it in on the Z axis. Like that. Alright, so now this is a basic low poly hammer. It only has 80 vertices and 48 faces. That's pretty much as simple as you can get. Um, I, I guess we could use less geometry on the handle. Um, but but this is um, really, really simple by modern standards. And uh, you could basically have an infinite number of these in the scene with no problem. So I'm going to rotate this so that it lines up with Unity's coordinate system. Apply the rotation and scale with Control A. And then uh, after applying it, I can just rotate it back. So that was rotated uh, on the x-axis by 90 degrees, rotate it um, back by 90 degrees. And now I'm going to save it into my Unity project. Uh, and while I'm at it, I might as well rename this to Hammer. Save it one more time. And uh, while I'm here, I also want to unwrap this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a second window. And I'm going to change this to the UV image editor. Now this is the two-dimensional representation of this 3D shape. So like we could put a texture here and um, we can map it to faces on this 3D model. So I'm going to select everything with A, U to unwrap, and Smart UV Project with an island margin of 0 0.05. And basically the island margin determines how, how far away these shapes are from each other. So now you can see we sort of like sliced along each edge and flattened this out. Save this one more time. And now I'm going to go to Unity. And once that loads, um, the first thing I want to do is click on Layout and Revert to Factory Settings. Uh, I'm using Surforge to texture this. And uh, it seems like it, it, it can be kind of buggy sometimes. So just, just as a bug prevention method, I, I do that. And I'm going to drag my project down here and my console over here just to open up some space. Now I'm going to go to Window and Surforge, dock this on the left side, and create a new texture. Alright, so now um, I'm going to click on this little Y gizmo, go into Top View. And now we have a cube here. I can right click and pan around this cube. So this is basically the 3D model we're working on. And then this is the flattened UV system. So like um, 3D model UVs, that's, that's what you're seeing here. And I'm just going to click on project, models, uh, hammer. And I'm going to expand this and then take the hammer model data and drop that into the open model field here. And uh, when you do that, make sure that you already have unwrapped your model. If you don't un unwrap the model before you drop it in, um, it, it's going to give you an error. All right, so now we have our 3D model here, the UV, the UV uh, layout here. And let's, let's say we want to paint on this model. To do that, we're going to use the Poly Lasso tool. And basically, we can use this to create um, different pieces of mock geometry that, that are going to be projected onto this model. So to start off, I think I will just double click inside this UV island and then hit space. And uh, now you can see we have a different material applied here. I'll just do the same thing on all, on all four of these pieces and then I'm going to hit escape to release the poly lasso and I'm going to click on one of these and hit the number two key. 
and then I'll click on this one and hit number three, this one number four, and this one number five. And then space one more time. And uh, by selecting these and hitting the different number keys, we're assigning different material masks to each of these pieces of geometry. And so now I can just shuffle this and uh, hit space to render. And you can see we have a, a different texture here, here, and here. So I think what I'm going to do is give these all the same texture. I'll just do 2, 2, 2, 2, uh, space one more time. And now I'm just going to shuffle the colors. And I can also change the scene lighting by going into the render tab and choosing a different skybox. So th that'll give us some indication of what this looks like in different lighting settings. Uh, Surfforge also comes with a pretty large material library, and we can just drag and drop materials onto this model. Um, now, if I want to change a specific piece, I can just hit Control while highlighting it here, and it'll um, highlight the UV island. Um, so you can see I'm hitting Control, and this piece is flashing. So I want to work on this piece now. And I'm just going to use the poly lasso, double click, double click, and escape to release the poly lasso. And I think I'll just give these, um, I'm going to give them all a different texture and space to render and now let's say I want a different color handle I'm going to I might as well just use this this base um, poly island I'm gonna hit 8 and render and uh, now let's just try a bunch of different textures that looks pretty cool so now, um, I, I still only have like 80 vertices. I haven't added any geometry, um, but I have added a lot of detail with these um, physically based rendering uh, materials. Um, now, I'm going to show you something else that that's, it's going to make this look like it has more geometry, but it actually won't, which is really, really good. So to do this, I, basically I'm just going to carve um, shapes into this into this piece right here. So I'm going to hit Control to figure out what. So it's this piece, and now I'm going to select that piece by left clicking on it. So now I have it selected in the Unity hierarchy, and I'm just going to start carving that into pieces. So I'm going to left click here, Shift, and if I hold Shift, this will snap by 45 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to hit Shift, left click, Shift, left click, Shift, left click, and shift control left click and so by hitting control we just uh, carved a line straight through this and essentially broke this into two pieces so now if I hit space again uh, you can see we have that line carved into there and uh, it, it looks like it actually carved out a piece of the geometry but it hasn't it's it's still the same um, extremely simple model so this is a really really great way to add um, more depth to your model without actually adding to the processing, processing time. So now shift, control, left click, and space to render again. Alright, so now I'm going to go to the other side. Uh, control, so that's this piece. And I'm going to add something called Greebles. And when I click on the Greeble panel, it's going to give me access to this tool. And I'm just going to line it up like that. And uh, I can take pretty much any of these. I'll just pick uh, this one. And I'm just going to start left clicking on my shape. Now it looks like they're, they're going below the other shape, so I can move this up. And now if I hit space, 
it looks like we have a lot more geometry. Still the same simple model, um, but this PBR material just makes it look so much better. And we can try a different pattern on this side. And that one looks terrible. So let's go ahead and shift right click to undo those. And let's just try a different pattern. And uh, I don't like that one either. So why don't we just leave this side the way it is. Now another thing we can do that um, that adds a lot of depth to the model. I'm going to create some more geometry with the poly lasso tool. And uh, I'm holding shift to snap. And uh, I think I'll just do something like that. And then control click to break the geometry. I'm going to take this piece and hit the number 7. And then hit space. And now you can see we applied a different material to that section. I don't quite like the pattern, so I'm just going to hit control Z a few times to undo. And let's just give it some, some different geometry here. Uh, shift, control, left click. And once again, hit 7, space. Now, I want to put some more stuff down here. Um, that must be this area. And shift, control, left click. And that, that didn't work because you have to make sure you actually snap across the geometry. Oh, and you also have to have it selected. Um, but but you can't really like crack the geometry. Like if I tried to control click here, it, it doesn't work. Yeah, you can't crack it. You have to go all the way across and break it into multiple pieces, like that. And I'll hit seven again and space. Now let's say I don't like these greebles. I can actually just select them and delete them. like that and then hit space to render and they're gone now let's uh, put some more shapes on this side oh, and, I, and again I have to have it selected Alright, now I'm going to take this piece and assign material 7, and render, and I think I'm just going to drag a different material onto this white slot. Yeah, I think that looks interesting. Now, uh, I, if I wanted to, I could just keep trying different things. There was also like a, a blue one that I really liked. Ooh, that looks cool. And uh, toward the bottom you have like different stony types of textures. And it seems like the more metallic textures are at the top. Alright, I think that looks alright. Um, now the next thing I want to do is add some emiss emissive textures to this. So I'm going to go to the uh, detail panel, add detail. And this is going to let me um, just add more shapes to the model. So like I could add uh, like different decals. 
Um, I'm looking for something more like this. Alright, so I just dropped this on here. We can't see it yet because we haven't rendered, so I'm going to hit space to render. And now that dropped it on this side. And uh, we still have exactly 80 vertices. We haven't added any actual um, any actual modeling to the mesh. This is all just fake geometry, which is amazing. Um, now, if I want to, I can select different pieces of this uh, new element we added. And I can I can change the material on those. So I don't like this uh, sort of brown texture. I'm going to hit 0 to change it to an emissive texture, and then hit space again. And now we just created a light. It's not a real light. It's, it's just an emissive texture. Uh, but it looks absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Now the next thing I can do is just select that piece, Control D to duplicate, W to go into uh, this transform tool, and drag it across. Hit space again, and now we have this on both sides. Um, I don't quite like the material down here, so I'm going to change that. And I also want to add more detail uh, to that part of the model. So I'm going to hit control, and basically the handle is these two pieces. Oh, actually I guess it's these four pieces. Um, but I'm just going to... I might as well just... Uh... Well, yeah, I guess I'll just make different islands for each of these. And I'm going to cut along this one. Make sure it's selected. And render. Now you can see we have this cut through here. And it, it changed our texture because um, there's something different on this than on this. And I don't like how this is being stretched. Uh, we could go back and fix that in Blender, but at this point, um, I don't really feel like it's worth it. So, after 15 minutes, we have a fairly decent looking hammer. Um, I'm just going to... Now, like, right now, it still has the same amount of geometry, and um, down here we have fake geometry, which gets projected onto this. So we can actually, like, take these pieces and move them around, as I've been showing you. Um, so now we're going to take this and literally just collapse it into... Um, six different textures which we will use in one PBR material. So I'm going to click on Export Maps, Assets, Video 2, Textures, and I'm just going to call this Hammer 1. Save. It only takes a second to export, and now you can see in our Textures folder we have uh, maps representing the fake geometry that we've built on this. So I'm going to save this scene and uh, usually, I, I try to make backup copies of these scenes because I like having um, I like having a copy of all the geometry. So later, if I don't like it, I can go back and change it, and I don't have to start from scratch. So I'm just going to create a folder called Surforge Scenes, so that way I can have a Unity scene for every model that I create. And I'll just call this Hammer, uh, and then I'm going to create a new scene. And I'm going to take my hammer, drop it in the scene, and uh, might as well reset it. Now it's it's zeroed out now. Hit F to zoom in on it. I'm going to close my Surforge window. And I think I'm just actually going to revert the whole window, the whole layout. Um, I like this way better. Now I want to create the material, so I'm just going to go go to my project folder create a folder for materials 
and I'm going to create a material called hammer one. Uh, drop that on the model, and I'm going to select that and then lock my inspector. That way, when I select other things, um, I'm still editing the same material. Now I'm going to click on textures, and uh, you can see we have different um, slots for textures here. Albedo, metallic, normal map, height map, occlusion, emission. Um, these things all give uh, different realistic... Uh, I don't know what to call it. They, they all, they all uh, each of these fields does something specific that makes the model look a certain way. So the metallic obviously makes the model look more metallic. Um, normal map uh, does some lighting calculation. Occlusion um, helps us have better shadows. So basically I'm just going to start taking these and dropping them into each corresponding slot. Um, but first I'm going to change this to specular setup because we also have a specular map. I'm going to right click on project and go to one column layout so now I can actually read the names of these and I'm just going to drop albedo so that gives us color but it looks really really flat um, as, when I, whenever I model something and texture it in blender I usually just have an albedo and again this this looks really really flat and that's because we don't have these other maps yet so we have an emission and I drop that on and it creates this mock light and you can see it actually like bleeds into the the rest of the texture and uh, I think if you use Unity's um, if you use uh, lighting um, if you use the global illumination with the right settings this should actually project light onto your environment um, I've never gotten that to work before but in theory that's what's supposed to happen I think you might have to have some sort of um, you might have to turn up the pre-computed global illumination. I'm not sure about that, but uh, anyway, emissive texture, pretty cool. Now we're going to take the height map, drop that here, take the normal map, and uh, we have to click fix now because it's not marked as a normal map. So I'm going to click fix. Um, we also have specular, one, two, three, four, and then occlusion. That's all six of our maps. Now, if we look around, it looks fairly decent. Um, I don't, I don't quite like the way it looks in this environment, but we can also tweak the environment. Like we can change the rotation of the light, and uh, in that lighting tab, um, Surforge gives us a bunch of skyboxes that we can play with. Let's see. Skybox. And I'll just take one of these and drop it on. Alright, so I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I'll probably keep making more in the future. I really like Surforge. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it in the description if you guys want to check it out. Um, it's really, really great, and uh, it, it's a little bit glitchy in my experience. It, it still seems like it's it's in the early stages of development, um, but you can get really, really nice results with minimal effort. So I like it a lot. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video, and thank you for watching.